Hi, welcome to Gadgets 360. Today we're going to be talking about one of the season's most highly anticipated games, Destiny 2. And who better to take us through everything we need to know than Rishi Alwani, games editor of Gadgets 360. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages. Uh, Destiny 2, for those of you who don't know, is a shared world shooter. What this means is, it has a huge online campaign, and which you can play with friends or alone. So if you're a local like me who prefers just playing on your own, playing solo, it's a great game to play. Or if you're someone like Jamshed who's super social and, you know, the uh, Mr. Congeniality of the crowd, yes, it's something you could partake in as well. The game had an open beta for consoles last month. And now it's of, it's of greater importance today because the game's coming to PC. The last game never made it to PC. This is the first. Uh, is the first time it's coming to PC, rather. And uh, Destiny 2 is, it has an interesting set of spec. Dates. So what sort of timelines are we looking at? When is this happening? So it's interesting because the dates on Destiny 2 uh, start a little early if you've pre-ordered the game. If you've pre-ordered the game, you can play the beta on August 28th and it ends on August 31st. If you haven't pre-ordered, uh, you can play the beta from August 29th and it also ends on August 31st. Uh, the beta takes you through the first level of the single player campaign and has uh, multiplayer elements such as one strike mode, which is a cooperative gameplay mode where you and friends take, uh, are up against the enemy, uh, the, the enemies in the game. And there's the deathmatch, which lets you fight off against other human combatants. So is there any hope for a decent single player campaign this time? Well, uh, if we consider, now, uh, to, for those of you who aren't aware, the first Destiny was really good at the beginning. I mean, the first few missions were really nice, but it ended up being quite uh, boring. Probably one of the worst single player campaigns of this generation. So uh, this time around, they promise a lot more emphasis on story, a lot more emphasis on presentation. And uh, it seems to promise that in, in what, what I've played of the beta on consoles. So yeah, we could see a better game. So let's talk about the differences between uh, playing on a PC and on a console. What sort of experience can you expect? Well, this time around, since it's the first time uh, a, a, the game is coming to PC, we're probably we're going to see support for well up to 4K and 60 FPS. We're going to see uh, keyboard and mouse support, and we're also going to see the game coming on not Steam. Steam is undoubtedly the most popular PC client, but it said it's coming to Battle.net, which is run by the game's publisher, Activision. So what happens in this case is, uh, yeah, you'll you'll, be, you'll have to download it via Battle.net. The game's on the expensive side though, uh, $3799 on PC, uh, if you're buying a, a, a physical copy from Amazon or Flipkart. And if you're buying it from Battle.net, it's $60, so yeah, almost the same price at the end of the day. Um, what else is different this time around is uh, the specifications. Now, oh, on console, you're, you're stuck at a 30 frame per second uh, limit, which means the game doesn't look as fluid or fast as it could be. While on PC, you can go up to 60 frames, which is a big difference for a lot of people. And so this, is, this is the case on the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. Yes, so there is. So what, 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 what's really amusing is, despite uh, Microsoft and Sony saying the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X are you know, more powerful versions of the, of the PS4 and Xbox One, respectively, they aren't that powerful. Hmm. Because uh, Destiny 2 is at 30 FPS. Even though it can do 4K resolution, it's at 30 FPS on both consoles. The reason for this is because the developers have said that the game has a lot of simulation. By what, what they mean by that is that there are player physics, there are enemy physics, there are vehicle physics, uh, there's, there's even the, the enemy AI and how, and how it reacts to the environment. Uh, so all of that takes, uh, is, makes the game a lot more CPU or processor intensive, mm -hmm. intensive than what uh, the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X can handle, so, which is why uh, it can't do 60 FPS on consoles. So are we looking at a significantly different experience on a PS4 versus a Pro and an Xbox One S versus a One X? Uh, honestly, there doesn't seem to be that much of a difference. Reason being, uh, Bungie have managed to make it look really good in terms... The, the art direction of this game is really strong. So there's very little difference in terms of what you end up seeing. Even graphically, there isn't too much of a problem on a 1080p display. Granted, if you move up to a 4K screen, you will see some differences in terms of visuals, but there's nothing that's uh, absolutely game-breaking or game-changing that you must play at 4K. So yeah, I mean, if you're, which means that if you have a PS4 and you're looking to upgrade to a PS4 Pro, or you have an Xbox One or an Xbox One S and probably thinking of buying an Xbox One X to play Destiny, uh, rather Destiny 2, uh, that's not something you need to do. So this is not the game that will push you over that edge? Uh, not on consoles, at least. PCs, however, is a different matter. Reason yeah. being, a lot of, a lot of uh, first impressions of people who've played the game on PC have said that 60 FPS has made a colossal difference to the game. 
uh, it makes a, uh, makes everything feel a lot more fluid, the response times are a lot faster, and it just makes for a better way to play. Uh, and it's also really weird because you'd think that with the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, the very least they could do is allow for 60 FPS at 1080p, but that isn't the case either. So Jamshed, since you're widely regarded as the PC components guy on the team, uh, what's your take on the spec for Destiny 2? Um, so here's what's most interesting to me. Um, while the CPU requirements are generally quite low, um, it seems that there's quite a wide range of graphics card options. So the minimum spec is uh, as low as a GTX 1050, whereas the recommended spec, and this isn't maximum, but this is recommended, is a 1080 Ti. Now this is the difference between like a 14,000 rupee graphics card and a 45 to 55,000 rupee graphics card. Yeah, so with one thing though, the 1080 Ti is what's needed for 4K, right? At 60 FPS. Yeah, that's what they're saying, but what we don't have an idea of is what the trade-offs will be. So it doesn't say 60 FPS 4K with all the settings turned up high. It doesn't say um, that you might have to turn something down in order to achieve 60 FPS 4K even with a card, with even with a graphics card that powerful. Yeah. So uh, and I think that's where the beta comes into play. We'll probably have more information on that when the beta rolls around. But uh, yeah, for now, if you're looking to build a PC or upgrade a PC, uh, this is the bare minimum you'd need. Uh, in terms of processing power, uh, what, what, what's the minimum spec? Again, we don't really know what the minimum spec for 60 FPS will be. Uh, we can take the recommended spec, but uh, we don't know how far this game will scale up and down. Now, there's no universal standard for what it means for a game to run at low or medium or high or ultra or whatever. So it seems that uh, questions like these will need to be answered after a little while, maybe after some uh, more beta testing or after the game is released to the public. If they are saying that the recommended spec is a 1080 Ti with the same CPUs, uh, which would be like a dual core Intel Core i3-3250 or an AMD FX4350. Uh, now, both of these are pretty old processors. The Core i3 is a dual core model from four or five years ago. Not terribly powerful. So, um, yeah, it should be really interesting to see how this game scales to different kinds of hardware. So while we have the recommended spec and we have the minimum spec, and if I'm not mistaken, in terms of uh, recommend, recommended, Bungie has said that anything with an i5 2400 or above should be fine. And uh, I mean, considering that a lot of viewers and a lot of people are using a GTX 970 as their, as their GPU, uh, which is I think one of the most popular cards from Nvidia at this point in time, mm -hmm. or even an RX uh, or 390 from AMD, considering those two are, are quite popular. Uh, what do you think the sweet spot for this game would be if if uh, if someone were to probably just check it out even at 1080p at a, at a decent frame rate? What do you think the sweet spot would be? Um, again, there's no easy way to say this because there's no standard for which uh, there's no standard by which you know a game will run at this particular quality setting uh, at any you know on any given set of components. So while while there is no actual way. Uh, to, or any universal standard to see how well a game will run on any given platform. We do know for a fact that the console versions are 30 FPS and probably 1080 or 900p, and or 4K in the case of the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro. Now, what do you think uh, uh, this means considering we have a recommended spec from Bungie as well? So what do you think uh, would be the ideal sweet spot for this? Okay, so two things about that first. Number one is that we still have to see how this game will be optimized. Mm -hmm. We still have to see where it will bottleneck in terms of CPU and GPU performance. But we're looking at, um, say, a Core i5 2400 CPU, 8 gigs of RAM, uh, GeForce GTX 970 as your minimum, take that to the current generation and make that a 1070. That gives you a pretty good idea of where you're going. Second point is that right now graphics card prices are completely out of whack because of cryptocurrency miners. So um, it's difficult to pin down a price because a lot of these cards are simply not available or are available with terrific markups uh, because there's a crazy demand and supply situation right now uh, for, uh, which has arisen because of people buying these cards to use them for uh, computationally intense math, which yeah. is uh, cryptocurrency mining. For those of you who are unaware, video card prices have gone through the roof and it doesn't seem to normalize anytime soon. 
for example, uh, the RX 580 from AMD and even NVIDIA's own 1060. Both cards have gone as high as 30,000 rupees, 35,000 rupees in a lot of, a lot of places at ne Nehru Place and Lamington Road. Now, uh, because of situations like this, it's very tough to pinpoint a good budget rig or a good mid-range or a good high-end uh, or a good high-end uh, machine at this point in time. It's also crucial because your GPU tends up, ends up being a large chunk of your budget while building a, a PC, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. it's also really odd because the only the, the only two uh, video cards we've seen that have been unaffected by this are the 1050, uh, which is on the low end, and, and the, the 1080 Ti, which is ex which is on the extreme high end. Yeah. So it kind of leaves you in a spot. If so, if you're looking to build a PC for Destiny 2, that's something to keep in mind. Perhaps you might be better served going with a last with a last gen component, or maybe considering the, consider the used market provided the card wasn't used for Bitcoin mining. Yeah. So in general, this is not a great time to be building a new gaming PC. It's not a great time to be going out to buy a graphics card. Um, Ideally, if all of this wasn't happening, you'd be able to meet this minimum spec with a new PC uh, for about 30, 35,000 rupees. That is, uh, that would cover your graphics card, CPU, RAM, motherboard, mm -hmm. power supply and case, not including a Windows license or not including uh, your monitor and keyboard and mouse and other peripherals. Yeah, so what that means is if, you're, if you have an access to a Windows license, you'll be paying 35,000. But if you don't have a Windows license and you need these other extras like a monitor and a case, expect to shell out close to around 40, 45,000, maybe even a little more, depending on how, on how, on how uh, high end you want to go with certain components. Yeah, and if you're going to meet that uh, recommended spec, you would go for something like a 1070, mm -hmm. a Core i5 or preferably an i7 CPU. You're looking at around an, an investment of around 60, 60 to 80,000 rupees. Yeah, so I mean, there you have it. You're, uh, depending on the experience you want, that's what you'd need. Probably, if you're if you're if you're on if you if you want a budget solution, yeah, you're looking at around max to max 40,000, 45,000, or if you're willing to spend a lot more, in probably a range of 65 to 80,000. But the the other thing to keep in mind is if you're strictly on a budget and you really don't mind what platform you want to play on. Uh, well, you can pick up a used PS4 for as low as 10,000. But then again, it's used, so you'll have to do, do your own due diligence and check it properly before buying. Yeah, and that will meet your minimum spec. And I uh, hate to say this, but at this point in time, uh, PCs aren't looking that great compared to consoles, if you're buying brand new. However, though, I do think the situation should change uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, reason being, we are seeing new cards coming from NVIDIA as well. We're, we're seeing AMD... Uh, segregate its lineup to have special cards for crypto for cryptocurrency alone. I don't know in the short term how much good that will do, but uh, hopefully towards uh, you know the end of the year, beginning of next year, we might see uh, a different state of affairs when it comes to pricing on, on, on the PC side of things. Uh, but that aside, what's interesting is we have a situation where uh, you have a game that could potentially work across all platforms, right? We've seen this with Minecraft, we've seen this with Rocket League. Uh, do you think those with a keyboard and mouse would have an advantage, considering this is a first-person shooter. Personally, um, yes, I would say uh, I'm one of those people who feels more comfortable with a keyboard and mouse. I'm not, uh, you know, super experienced with console FPSs, but uh, I would take a keyboard and mouse any day. So while it's interesting that on the recommended side of things, there's a 1080 Ti up in center. What do you think would be needed from Red Team? I mean, what do you think would be needed from an AMD solution if someone were to go that way? Well, if you're looking at uh, 1080, uh, sorry, if you're looking at the 1070 as, you know, a standard, we're looking at the new AMD RX Vega series. The Vega 56 approaches that level of performance. Uh, Vega 64 approaches the level of the 1080. But um, there are trade-offs which. Uh, a for one would be availability, B price, C power and heat. Um, but in a market like this, I think you're gonna want to take whatever you can get. So it it doesn't necessarily make a difference. The one thing that could help out uh, if you're chasing that kind of 60 FPS smoothness is variable refresh rates. Okay. So depending on the monitor you have or you want to get, you could choose Nvidia for G Sync. You could choose AMD for FreeSync. But then, having said that, uh, while you know variable refresh rate is, is another component, what, what's your take on the driver side of things? Because th that ends up being a large uh, deciding factor for a lot of people. 
the support in terms of drivers, the additional features which let's say uh, GeForce Experience or AMD Gaming Evolve brings to the table. So uh, do you see any difference in parity in feature set? Well, lots of games favor one company over the other, AMD over NVIDIA or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So a lot depends on that. If you're talking about drivers, um, new releases come out every month, every other month, um, and generally both companies advertise performance gains of 5%, mm -hmm. 10%, 20%, 30% maybe. Um, so that situation can change. It can change throughout the lifetime of a card. Interesting. So, I mean, just to round this off then, oh, so if you, if you were to play Destiny 2 on PC, uh, what would be your ideal spec? Sure, granted, we don't know the performance right now, but where do you think the sweet spot would lie? Um, if I was looking at a sweet spot, I wouldn't go for the minimum recommended spec. I mean, now they're recommending a 1080 Ti and it's hard to get better than that. So let's go with that. But as for the rest of it, um, I would want a machine that would last a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would not want to upgrade and I would not uh, want to be caught uh, under-equipped when the next big game comes out. Mm -hmm. So I would look at at least a Core i7 CPU. Um, right now it's the seventh gen that's out there, but we're looking at the eighth gen launch, mm -hmm. uh, what Intel calls this fall, which mm -hmm. means before the end of the year. So maybe in time for Destiny 2, maybe just after. Um, we'll be looking at 16 gigs of RAM. I don't think 8 is cutting it right now. But given the prices, um, I wouldn't blame anyone for taking 8. If you're asking me my choice, I'd go with 16. Right. Um, definitely make sure you have a decent large SSD because that's going to make all the difference in the world when it comes to game loading times um, and just general system performance and longevity. And uh, other than that, a uh, nice uh, stable power supply something with a, a rating of at least 600 watts and maybe like gold uh, mm -hmm. for power efficiency uh, if you're running that 1080 Ti. A lot of people will say more than that, but realistically six, 600 will cover you with a decent brand, uh, decent quality. And a nice cabinet that shows it all off. So my budget would come to a minimum of 80,000. And that's again, just for the hardware, just for the core mm -hmm. hardware. Interesting. Well, my solution would be the simple one. I'd probably just go to PS4 or PS4 Pro because that seems to be a lot more cost effective than spending 80,000. But that's just me and that, that's a solution I'd go with. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, if you're looking to bother with Destiny 2 on PC, be it the beta or the final release, uh, the PC version, while probably go going to be graphically superior, may not be exactly easy on your wallet. Um, and yeah, for all things gaming, you're ready at the right place. Stay tuned to Gadgets360.com for more. You can even check out all our other gaming videos on the channel or check out our weekly podcast, which is Transition, or which you should even check out right on iTunes. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Gadgets360.